Have you ever wondered what makes you, you? Why do you have your mother's eyes, your father's smile, or why twins look so alike? The answers lie in a fascinating field of science called genetics. In this lesson in Science 8, we are going to explore the basics of genetics for the learning competency, represent patterns of inheritance of a simple dominant, recessive characteristic through generations of a family. So, what is the science of genetics? Genetics is the branch of biology that studies how traits, like eye color, height, or even the ability to taste certain flavors, are passed from parents to their offspring. But genetics is more than just what you inherit. It's about understanding how these traits are passed on. Why do some traits skip a generation? Why do siblings look alike but never exactly the same? That's where genetics comes in. By studying inheritance patterns, scientists can trace how traits move through families. They can even predict the chances of certain traits appearing in future generations. This is known as the science of heredity. Genetics helps us explain the diversity of life on Earth and even how species evolve over time. It's the foundation of modern biology, medicine, and biotechnology. In 1866, Gregor Mendel, an Austrian monk, began experimenting with pea plants to study how traits are inherited. His work with self-fertilization and cross-pollination allowed him to discover patterns in inheritance. Later on, as scientists discovered his contribution to science, Mendel was regarded as the father of genetics. The first question is, does genes influence our appearance? Look around you. What are some physical traits you notice that Opal have in common? What are some that are different? Where are genes located inside the cell? In this diagram, you will be able to see how nucleus of the cell houses chromosomes that can be broken down to DNA, while DNA is composed of nitrogenous bases. Let us now explore the smallest unit of life, the cell. A cell is the smallest unit of an organism and cells are known as the building blocks of life. Most human cell types contain a nucleus. The part where the chromosomes lie is the nucleus. The nucleus control the cell, but it is also where genetic information is stored. The nucleus contains structures called chromosomes. Chromosomes are made of DNA. Let's zoom in a little closer, into the chromosomes. Each chromosome is actually made of just one long molecule of DNA, tightly wound and packaged. You can imagine it like an enormous instruction scroll that's been folded up to fit inside the cell. That classic X shape you've seen? It only appears right before a cell divides. That's when the DNA copies itself, then coils and condenses, getting ready for a smooth split during cell division or mitosis. So, those X's? They're a snapshot of DNA in action, organized, duplicated, and ready to pass life's instructions to the next generation of cells. Inside each chromosome is a molecule called DNA, short for deoxyribonucleic acid. It's the instruction manual for life. Within this DNA, specific sections are called genes. Think of genes as sentences in that manual, each one giving the code to make a particular protein. And proteins? They're the workers of the cell, building structures, sending signals, and keeping everything running smoothly. So from chromosomes to DNA, to genes and proteins, it's a chain of command that makes life possible. So, how do we find a gene? It starts in the nucleus of the cell, that's the control center. Inside the nucleus are chromosomes, and each chromosome is packed with DNA. Zoom in closer, and you'll find specific sections of DNA. These are genes, small segments with powerful instructions. It's like finding a chapter in a book, on a shelf, in a giant library. Organized, precise, and packed with information. Then what are genes? In humans, genes vary in size from a few hundred DNA bases to over two million bases. Genes are composed of segments of DNA, the molecule that encodes genetic information in cells. Some act as instructions to produce molecules called proteins, and many of them do not apparently encode. Basically, a gene is the fundamental physical and functional unit of heredity. So, what are alleles? Think of a gene as a recipe, and alleles as different versions of that recipe. Each person inherits two alleles for every gene, one from their mother, and one from their father. These alleles are found at the same position on a pair of homologous chromosomes, 
chromosomes that match in size and structure. Sometimes, the alleles are the same, like two identical recipes. Other times, they're different, like one for curly hair and one for straight. The combination you inherit determines how a trait is expressed. In many cases, one allele can be dominant, meaning it masks the effect of the other, called recessive. So while the gene gives the instructions, the alleles decide which version of the trait you actually show. Alleles can be homozygous or heterozygous. If both alleles are identical, the individual is homozygous for this gene. If both alleles are different, the individual is heterozygous for this gene.